Hey guys, how are you doing today? Today I'm going to show you three different ways on how to paint grass with watercolor. Let's get started. Let's add some washi tape to our paper because it would look way more professional that way. Now we're going to add some water on our paper because we're using the wet on wet technique. Now I'm adding some paint to this. Don't worry about it too much. And uh, now we're using the wet on dry technique where I'm just putting some streaks down there just with a wet brush but on the dry paper. And then I'm wetting the paper just to blend everything in. Don't worry about making it perfect because nature is messy and this is just the first layer and we'll add more and more layers. Now I'm adding a more vibrant green. I'm just switching up those colors. Sometimes I use a bit more desaturated color and sometimes a more vibrant one because in nature there are different tones and not just one type of green. Now I'm adding more paint that's a bit darker because I want to have some shadows down there. And as you see, the colors blend in a lot because I used a lot of water on the paper. And depending on how much water you added, the more blended it gets. But just be careful to not add too much water or else you will have those tiny little puddles where there will be water in them and you really don't want that. We want a soft and clean look. And I'm also doing a water down on the picture just to make it a little bit more interesting. In case you don't want to do that, you can just skip that. But it's very easy. I'm just doing basically the same thing and making those lines because there is movement in the water. It's a river or something like that with a lot of movement. And now I'm adding more details and more shadows. I'm kind of varying the amount of water that I use because I want some thicker and some thinner grasses. Grasses? Is that the plural? <laughs> I've never said that. So now we're adding more and more of this. This is very easy. You just do basically simple lines. Be sure to make it as messy as you can. It will look way more natural if those lines are not evenly spread. Sometimes you add more and on other parts of the painting you just add a little less. And now I'm doing a bit of a detail on our river here. That's just very easy and also very organic. I'm not worrying about making it too perfect. Just adding a few lines here. And now we're doing even more and more shadows on our grass there. That's basically the whole technique. It's super easy. Even if you're a real beginner and have never painted anything before, I guess you're able to do that. And if you do that, afterwards you will have learned a lot about watercolor because I'm switching up those techniques. I'm just basically using wet on wet and wet on dry because the paint is obviously always kind of wet here. Now I'm adding more and more shadows. Now I'm using kind of a desaturated black. It's not completely black but already pretty dark. And now I'm also making the background a bit more vibrant because I thought that it would need it. So if at any point you feel like your painting lacks a bit of color, just add it back in. And you can also do that to desaturate something if you just add a very transparent layer of black or gray onto your painting. And now we're going to use our white because that's what's going to make this painting really pop. I'm using a jelly roll pen. You can use any kind of white gel pen that you have. And here I'm just using this kind of technique where I paint the top and then smudge the bottom with my fingers because it will look way more organic, way more natural because the bottom will be blended in. And I'm also adding some details to our river here 
and a few white dots in our background to make it look a little bit more magical and also a little bit more natural. And a little bit of dots here on our riverside and smudging those in as well. <laughs> I'm just basically blending everything to make it look a bit more natural. And with those highlights, everything pops a bit more. It has a little bit of light on it. And now the final touches. I'm adding in a few black lines to make it look even more three-dimensional. And now we're done with the first painting and I'm just removing the tape and fixing up those edges here. I'm just putting some white gouache on top of it. And now the mistake's all gone. So let's start with our third painting. By the way, I'm using some reference pictures, but I'm not completely copying those. It's just a little bit for ideas and for the color reference. So I'm wetting the paper at first and then adding the paint like we did on our first painting. Now I'm blending it a little bit with another color, but not blending it too much. You see on the reference picture that those are kind of mountains. I'm also removing a bit of color in the middle with the tissue. Now let's add some more paint. I'm doing this very messily because I want a painterly look there. And even more of that on the other side. This is the wet on dry technique. I'm using a very, very wet brush with a lot of water and just some paint and I'm messily painting on there. And now I'm wetting the paper for our third painting because I will do the second and third painting at the same time just to reduce the time where I'm waiting for the paper to dry. And here I'm also creating that very soft effect, blending those colors in and starting with the first layer. Here you can really see the difference between our top painting and our bottom painting. On the top I'm mainly using a wet paint on a dry paper and on the bottom I'm always wetting the paper first. So I'm creating this very soft look, but it only gets you so far to do that. In the end, you will have to add some detail in on dry paper because otherwise it will look completely blended. If that's the effect that you want in your painting, then that's perfect and you can stop there. I'm guessing that you will probably use some of those techniques on grass when you are painting a landscape and the grass is not the main focus. It's just the main focus here. It's the main event of our paintings. So I'm adding in as many details as I can just to make it look like a painting in the end and not completely boring. But if it's not the main focus of your painting, you can just leave this very, very soft and just skip the detailing part and it will look great. Now I'm using a very, very thin detail brush and like in our first painting, I'm adding in some shadows with almost black. I always mix my greens with a black and just in the end I'm using black as it is. I'm not using too much black because otherwise it will be completely dark but those are the shadows and you can clearly see that those are not distributed over the whole paper. I'm just varying the amount of lines that I do to make it look more natural. And now we're again using our white paint. You can use opaque wash, you can use Chinese white like I'm doing here and you can also use acrylic paint, whatever opaque white paint you have or you can also go and buy those because you can get those incredibly cheap and you don't need an expensive product for that and it will help you make those kinds of paintings where something pops. I'm also adding a bit of sunlight, a bit of shine here and blending that in with a dry brush now and 
to make it look a bit more magical. And now I'm adding some lights with the opaque gouache. And also the sun and a few dots. That's kind of a bokeh effect. You see it on the reference picture. That's when you take a picture and there's some light coming in and it's not in focus, then you get those blurred dots and those look incredibly magical if you ask me and so that's why I wanted to add them to the top painting and now I'm using my gel pen to make the grass pop a little bit more and to make it stand out a little bit by the way I'm also making sure that I'm not adding the paint to every single grass here because otherwise it would look completely strange and you just want to make some of those pop a little bit and now I'm adding in a little bit of color with my colored pencils and blending those out nicely and then we're done I'm removing the tape again and I really love this part because it looks so great and I ripped a little bit of my paper down there but don't worry if that happens to you you can just fix it with a glue stick and then it looks perfect again so here are the finished pieces I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from that I'm going to do even more watercolor tutorials for you, so stay tuned for the next video. And I wish you a very nice week and until next time, goodbye!